my channel so in today's video i'm going to be sharing with you guys my breastfeeding journey with elizabeth now some of you might be confused because one elizabeth is 2.2 so you're probably thinking wow you've been breastfeeding for a long time b you're thinking didn't you stop breastfeeding a long time ago so why are you making this video now the answer is b I stopped breastfeeding a long time ago, but I've had a lot of women in my life recently become pregnant or given birth, and they've come to me with a lot of questions about breastfeeding. So I thought I would come on here today and share with you guys my breastfeeding journey because I thought about it and I never shared this story with you. I don't think I ever gave you the full details from start to finish of my breastfeeding journey. So I'm gonna share with you guys all my favorite products, what worked, what didn't work, how long I breastfed for, if I used formula, if I did both, if I pumped, all that kind of stuff. So if you're a breastfeeding mom or you're just curious about my breastfeeding journey, maybe you know somebody, any, anything, don't mind my cat. Um, yeah, if you're just like curious or whatever, um, then keep watching, like this video, hit the subscribe button, and let's get started. Alrighty, so Elizabeth was born May 12th, 2018. And before I had her, I knew that I wanted to breastfeed. Um, it had, it wasn't even a question, wasn't even a doubt in my mind. Like formula, just never crossed my mind. And I am very fortunate to live in a country where um, maternity leaves are for a year or 18 months, which gives you a lot of time to have that breastfeeding journey um with your child i've never worked in the states before but i can i'm sure that it could it must be difficult or anywhere in the country where um or the world where um your maternity leave is a very short so i think that makes a huge difference when you have that amount of time so on my baby registry i put a breast pump and i asked for the even little breast pump i didn't do any research to it i just it was one that was reasonably priced and that's when I put on my um, baby registry at Babies R Us. So um, I also couldn't find the nursing bra that went with it in my size. So I didn't get that. I just got the pump and um, yeah, I knew that pumping was also something I wanted to do. I wanted her to be able to breastfeed and bottle feed. I know that's not easy for everybody. I'm, I've heard of stories where people have introduced the bottle, but all of a sudden they stop breastfeeding or they don't take the bottle and now they've all got this you know bags of milk that they can't use because their child won't use it so um yeah that was just something that i knew i wanted to do i wasn't opposed to the idea of formula that's also what i needed to do but i really wanted to breastfeed um so yeah that's what i did all my sisters to breastfed so um yeah, I don't know. It just was kind of part of my family. They did it. I was going to do it. I don't know. Not that they were the reasons why I did it, but I think that helps. Um, I, could, I could see how that could be challenging if nobody around you breastfed or everybody around you formula. I guess that's kind of the same thing. If nobody breastfed, they're probably formula, formula feeding. But anyway, um, so yeah. Um, then I had Elizabeth, and they told me at the hospital that she had lost, I think, 11% of her birth weight, and they wanted them to never lose more than nine. Um, I, th I think, don't call me that with that number, but basically she was like, she had lost a pound. She was 713 um, when she was born and then lost a pound those five days that I was at the hospital. Um, so they had suggested that I top up with formula after I was in breastfeeding. So um, I'm trying to think when they told me this. I want to say this near the end of my stay, but. Um, basically, when you give birth, whether it's C-section or not, I had a C-section baby, um, you don't get your milk in right away. It takes a couple days, and for the first couple of days, it's it's called colostrum, and it's basically like this clear, kind of thick, mucousy substance. Maybe mucousy is a strong word, but it's not like dripping. I feel like maybe mucus is the right word, but anyway, thick, syrupy kind of consistency. Um, not that I'm saying it's sticky, but like that kind of consistency. So, um, my classroom came in and, um, she was latching on free, no issues. However, they wanted her to get like more classroom than she was getting. So they basically, what I had to do 
was like pinch my nipple and squeeze the colostrum into like a little like um i'll answer a picture like medicine cup and then taking a syringe they wanted me to syringe it into her mouth so that's what I did on top of breastfeeding, um, just to make sure she was getting as much colostrum as possible. Um, so they did give me a starter pack of formula that I could try, and they were already pre-measured, like pre-made, if that makes sense, like it was a liquid form, and that's what I did to help top out. So one nice thing about her being on formula slash I was breastfeeding at the time um, was that I could get a little more sleep. So I would go to bed at like say nine, then at like midnight when she was ready for her second feeding, um, my husband would feed her the formula bottle and then um, I would pump as much as I could, but even that was tricky, so I'm gonna get more into that. And then at like 1 a.m. I would um, breastfeed her again. Wait, does that make sense? No, like 3 a.m.? It was like 3 a.m. I got about five or six hours of sleep that first week or two weeks, and it was amazing. <laughs> that was a good feeling, however, I think that I already so my battery just died so if it looks a little different that is why um but yeah so basically my husband took two weeks off that was all I think he could use um for his vacation I can't remember he might have taken more off that year I don't remember but anyhow I just no he took four weeks off what am I talking about he took all his vacation off because I had a c-section I couldn't drive and so he was originally going to take two weeks off but then he just took off his vacation um, right then and there. Sorry. So I feel like that was definitely a dangerous move on our part because basically what I'm telling my body is it doesn't need to produce as much milk. Um, so because I'm not breastfeeding in the month or in the night, I'm not like pumping. So um, I didn't think it affected it, but that is definitely a risk that we took. Um, I never took supplements or anything like that. That's another thing I want to mention. Um, never did anything create like nothing yeah i did nothing to increase my milk supply but pump and we had also seen a lactation um, consultant in the hospital and as well as after um so something that they have is um this program i can't think of the name but basically it's a program and um after like 10 days they typically only do it with your first baby they don't ever do it with your second or third um but for new parents um, they will come into your home, kind of talk to you, uh, you know, um, ask you questions about like postpartum, how you're doing, you know, they want to make sure that you're not having like any like post baby blues kind of thing. Um, and then they also want to see how you're doing breastfeeding, um, if you are breastfeeding, um, what else? That's it. And we also saw a lactation consultant again once we left the hospital like we had to go back the next day for a follow-up appointment and um we saw a lactation consultant again oh my gosh i'm so sorry but sometimes when i film i think it's the ring light it makes me yawn i don't know if it's just like that brightness um sometimes okay but sometimes like i find that like i want to yawn and stuff it makes me tired um but anywho so yeah we had a lactation consultant come and that was really helpful um i think as women we're afraid to ask for help when it comes to that kind of thing um it makes us feel like we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing like our bodies were made to have children or to bear children i should say not have because it's your choice i don't want to like make people think that i'm like this kind of person where i'm like you're a woman you need to have kids no but like basically like a man can't produce milk, right? A man cannot have babies. Their bodies are not made that way. So you almost feel like you're failing um, if you have to get more help. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think that's awesome and amazing because you care so much to breastfeed that you're like doing whatever it takes kind of thing. Like you have that mentality and attitude to help out. And I think too, like, you know, you don't want to be stressed. You don't want to not be latching properly because that's another thing too that can happen. I think people have this mindset, and I definitely did too, that breastfeeding is just like this. You just basically put the baby on your boob and away you go. But it, there's so much more to it. And that is definitely something I wish I would have taken before. I wish I would have taken a breastfeeding class or a course before um, I had her. And I think that would have like helped a little bit as well. Um, something else I want to mention, especially I feel like for new time moms, is don't be afraid to stick up for yourself when it comes to breastfeeding and 
like around other people if you don't feel comfortable with it then like it's i think it's okay to tell people to leave and i think it's there's nothing wrong with planning visits and such because people want to see your baby like around their breastfeeding or your child's breastfeeding schedule um and don't be afraid if you need to like have your spouse kind of stick up for you because i know for me i struggled with telling people basically to leave or um yeah to leave when i breastfed i just didn't feel comfortable and it's just not something i wanted to do in front of other people i had nothing i mean apartment also was to, to me that's like intimate and private i just like i don't want to share that moment with somebody else and my husband it's fine but especially in the beginning when you're trying to learn because i know for me like it would intimidate me you have this person especially if it was other moms in the past you have these like women who are mothers and who have breastfed fed before and they're in this room and you feel like they're judging you they're watching you they're you know looking at your every move and making sure you're doing it right or at least that's what you're thinking in your head right so um i don't think there's anything wrong with that and um yeah like especially in the beginning when you're first trying to like start out like after a while i didn't mind breastfeeding in front of my mom that didn't bother me um but like other than that and my husband i didn't i didn't breastfeed in public um and if you want to breastfeed in public that is totally fine like i thought i'd be that person until i realized that like i don't want to be in a busy loud mall like i wanted to be quiet and i want to have my netflix on or whatever mind you i only had one kid so obviously breastfeeding uh with baby number two in the future if that happens um, is going to look a little bit different, but I, I just liked being at home and being like peaceful. And I want to say around like five or six months, that's when she got busy and she wanted to be looking everywhere. So breastfeeding took so much longer because like she just wanted to know what's going on. Like if my husband was having a conversation with me, she'd have to stop every two times because like, what are you guys talking about? <laughs> kind of thing. Um, and so there was a time where if I had a breastfeeder, he couldn't be around in the room because there was this phase where like she's just busy um i did try to um nurse her with like a covering in public and she hated it she wanted it off she couldn't stand this like fabric over top of her um so <laughs> that didn't help as well i would like breastfeed her in my car Alrighty, so both of my batteries for whatever reason decided to die on me so we are finishing this video off on my iphone um i'm so close to finishing this video there's only a few more things i want to touch base on so i was like oh, i don't want to like stop it and forget what i was saying um to pick this up like a following day so um what i was saying was don't be afraid to tell people to leave and stuff like that and like i said i didn't mind um breastfeeding in like in my car or something where i was alone and it was quiet but that's just personally how i liked it um so that was something i also wanted to share with you guys as for pumping i used the even flow breast pump and it was so hard because she didn't always love to sleep unless she was on you which meant pumping very hard um i just felt like i struggled to find a good time to pump it's also kind of loud there's all these like cords and things and i felt like by the time i set up i had to go breastfeed her again or something i don't know um and i know that's another thing that people struggle with is feeling like they're breastfeeding all the time i know that's what people have said before and why they've quit um it never bothered me and i think too like it definitely helps you slow down and just like not be so go 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 um that's just my personality so it was just nice to sit back and just take everything in and just relax you know um i didn't mind it also for somebody too that maybe if you struggle on like what to do with a newborn and you're just feeling like bored breastfeeding man like your day flies by because it's like before i know it you have to breastfeed again so um that's a little i don't know comment thing um so yeah that's what i used and then around christmas time so she would have been like six probably six and a half months old is when i was watching a youtube video i want to say it was like britney born leech or something i can't remember but somebody had talked about a like manual breast pump and i was like what that is a thing it is another thing that i recommend is the haka breast pump i think i'm saying it right it's not even a pump 
but basically when you first have a baby you get a lot of like leak you leak a lot like as your milk comes in and stuff and so there's a lot of milk being wasted and soaked up into your um nipple pads breast pads i don't even know what you call them which is nursing pads <laughs> um which is something that you'll want to put in your bra i just used reusable ones um so that when you leak they're not like going through your shirt and stuff so that's also something you're gonna want and nipple cream and i've read somewhere that like you shouldn't like breastfeeding should never be painful i think that's a why i feel like everybody i talk to like they say you're doing it wrong i remember reading like a blog post about that and i'm like i don't know because when you think about it think of like your nipple just going through this crazy change like all of a sudden this little tiny human is like sucking on it and it's wet and like all the time like it would make sense to get raw and feel tender and stuff um another thing too is that as i was still learning how to latch properly i'm gonna put the name here but i got this like i would get this all the time and so i would just i literally put rice in a sock and microwaved it and then i learned you're not or what I was doing, oh, I'm going to have to like edit, Ashley's going to have to fix this, but basically I was doing one thing and you're supposed to do another. I was either icing it when you're supposed to he put heat to it, or I was either putting heat to it when you're supposed to put ice to it, but one of the ways is supposed to help. Um, so yeah, and I would like stick it in my bra, um, but uh, yeah, so that happened, and um, what was I going to say? Um, oh, breast pumps. So yeah, I ended up using starts with an L, I'll leave the name here, breast pump, and it's manual, so you just like use your hand, now obviously you can't do it to both breasts at the same time, um, but let me tell you, it came in handy, like I loved that thing, and it definitely stepped up my breastfeeding game, because I could be holding her or something, and it was just so easy, like, oh excuse me, I didn't have to worry about wires and stuff like that, clutter, taking up space, um, you, I could like pump when we were traveling. I remember one time, probably not the safest thing to do, but she was fussing in the back and I had my mom. And so literally I was like driving down the road using my manual pump, trying to get some milk out and so that my mom could like feed her. Um, so like that just shows you how convenient it is. So that definitely helped. As for formula, because I wanted to touch base more on that. So basically what they said was I needed to top up a formula, right? Because I wasn't, like, she was losing too much weight. So I was a little bummed about that, but I knew that, like, fed is best. And, you know, I can still, like, if for whatever reason. Because I was also afraid because I started with a bottle so soon that I was afraid she wasn't going to um, take the breast anymore. And then I'd have the pump, which is fine. But that was something I worried about and at a time there was also another time too where she would not take the like she would not breastfeed around 7 7 30 um i don't know what it was but she would just, like not latch on to save my life so i would give her a bottle i would try but then after if it didn't work i would give her a bottle and then before I know it, she was fine. And I will say that like, I never had an issue with her breastfeeding or taking a bottle. I use the Avent bottles and I never had an issue. I never changed up the nipple sizes. Um, that was fine. Um, I know I talked about my struggles with, you know, my nipples cracking and they being sore at the beginning. And I can't remember if I said this, I don't think I did, but nipple cream, that's also gonna help. It's not gonna bother the baby. It's not gonna like, um, it's not toxic, but it just helps um with that also i would pump and breastfeed as well because i just felt like my nipples needed a break and it was just so painful that i would just like let them rest for like say six hours and just pump so like every three hours or every six hours i would pump every six hours i would breastfeed if that makes sense so like say i breastfed at 9 a.m um at 12 p.m i would um pump and then i would breastfeed again at 3 p.m and then that gave my nipples a break and that seemed to help um also a, um, a nursing pillow is amazing i wish i would have brought mine to the hospital but they are a game changer they just help support baby and help you rest your arms and i just made breastfeeding so much easier and comfortable because that's important too like you want to be comfortable when breastfeeding also keep water bottles and granola bars everywhere i was hungry all the time and thirsty so it, it was nice that like it didn't matter where i was didn't matter what time of day it was i'd have granola bars and water bottles somewhere or water somewhere um so that's something i also wanted to share with you guys and um 
that's basically it. There's one more formula story I wanted to share with you guys, um, just to share with you that I did use formula a little bit, and that's because I had two weddings back to back where I was the maid of honor and I just didn't pump enough milk at the time. Um, and so it helped out so much that I could just use the formula. And then while I was out, if I had the chance, I would, I would pump. Um, but yeah, that was the other time I used formula and that's okay. Like if you have to, you have to, right? Um, and I don't want this video to be like, you have to breastfeed. You cannot form like feed your baby formula that's not what i'm trying to say i'm just trying to share with you guys my breastfeeding journey um because i also enjoy watching these videos so one last thing i wanted to say and finish this is when our breastfeeding journey ended so i could tell that my around a year um my supply was just kind of drying up i wasn't pumping as much and she, at this point we had transitioned her to homo milk um not fully like we had like slowly integrated it into her diet and um there were some days depending on my work schedule where she wasn't even breastfeeding at all like if like it depended how early she got up in the morning because if she didn't get up early enough she wasn't getting breastfed because there was no time to just sit and let her breastfeed um before work and daycare and such so in july that would have put her at like 14 months old wait yeah 14 months old that's when we stopped and i basically did it cold turkey don't know if you're supposed to but basically i couldn't even sit down with her anymore before like um, and because she would just want to like breastfeed and i knew she didn't need it i knew she wasn't hungry and i also knew that my supply wasn't like a ton there so she wouldn't be getting a lot and so i slowly weed her off i think it took like two or three days because there was even some days where she wouldn't breastfeed at all just with my schedule and stuff and um what was the other thing um breastfeed but yeah i i don't even remember what i was gonna say but basically i couldn't even sit down and i knew that's when i was gonna stop originally i was like okay well when she gets teeth i'll stop but then she didn't get teeth till she was like 11 months old and it really was fine i know some people worry about that um but it was fine but yeah i just knew i was like you know what i don't have a lot she, there's some days where she goes without and she was fine it really was not a hard transition at all it took a couple days and that was that so i am going to end this video here i hope you enjoyed it found it helpful anything i don't know um leave in the comments down below any questions you have regarding breastfeeding and i'll see you guys next week for a brand new video bye guys